Well, a prominent Wall Street analyst predicted this week that not a single top executive at Goldman Sachs will face criminal prosecution for the company's role in causing the financial meltdown of 2008. The analyst, Brad Hintz, said the U.S. government still views Goldman Sachs as too big to fail. So far, the Securities and Exchange Commission has filed suit against only one Goldman Sachs employee, a young mid-level trader named Fabrice Touré, who was part of an effort at the bank to essentially place bets that the housing market would collapse. The prosecution of Touré was the subject of a front-page article in The New York Times this week, written by one of our next guests, Gretchen Morganson. Gretchen Morganson is the Pulitzer Prize-winning business reporter at The New York Times, who's written extensively on how the U.S. government has failed to prosecute any of the top figures who played a role in the economic crash. She's co-author of a new book called Reckless Endangerment, How Outsized Ambition, Greed and Corruption Led to Economic Armageddon. Her co-author, Joshua Rosner, is an expert on housing finance and a partner at the independent research consultancy firm of Graham Fisher & Company. The book, in the book, they argue that the root of the financial crisis lies in President Clinton's decision to heavily promote home ownership in the 90s and the lowering of lending standards by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Uh, Gretchen Morganson and Joshua Rosner, thanks so much for being with us. Um, let us start with, uh, with Gretchen Morganson. Just lay out the thesis of this book. Well, the thesis really is that Fannie Mae, which, of course, was created in 1938 to, um, you know, help homeowners have access to credit to borrow to get a home, really sort of expanded um, in a way that was designed very much to benefit the insiders at the company. Remember, this is a company that was both public and private, had a lot of government perquisites, and received those perquisites and used them to its own advantage. So. It's, it's a story, I think, of, of how sort of good and noble ideas can go awry, and really a lesson in how not to allow that to happen again. And, Joshua, how exactly did uh, Fannie Mae go from being a government-created agency to basically a private corporation backed by the government? Yeah. So the government uh, in, uh, in the late 1960s uh, decided that they needed a competitor for uh, for Fannie Mae, so they created Freddie Mac. Uh, they ended up privatizing both of those decade later. And uh, in privatizing, they retained a line of credit to the Treasury, which wasn't really large enough to matter uh, fundamentally, but it told the markets, it implied to the markets, along with other benefits that they had, such as not having to file financial statements with the SEC, as all other companies did, that these were special companies. These were companies that retained uh, some government support. And so publicly they would say, and they would put on all of their debt issuances, that these are not obligations guaranteed by the government. But privately and quietly there would always be a wink, wink, nudge, nudge that went along with that comment, uh, to the point where foreign central banks became more and more and more comfortable buying uh, government-sponsored enterprise debt, Fannie and Freddie debt, as a proxy for U.S. Treasury debt, because they'd get the extra, the extra yield, and uh, they believed that it was government-guaranteed. Well, if there's a, if, the, if I can say, if there's a key villain in uh, in your story, uh, it's James Johnson, who was for a long period of time the chief executive of, of uh, Fannie Mae. You quote at one point that under Johnson, uh, Fannie Mae uh, uh, led the way uh, in encouraging loose lending practices among the banks whose loans the company brought. A Pied Piper of the financial sector, Johnson led both the private and public sectors down a path that led directly to the credit crisis of. 2008. Uh, but now, now, some people, though, have questioned whether you're not uh, sort of um, echoing uh, the criticism that's been raised by some of the Republican uh, Tea Partiers, Sarah Palin herself, saying Freddie and Fannie <laughs> were behind the whole crisis. Uh, this whole issue of uh, the the reduction of lending standards uh, by the government and by Fannie Mae and how that affected the crisis. Can you talk about that? We're certainly not saying that Fannie and Freddie were the, you know, key uh, movers in this. They were, Fannie was a lead mover, a prime mover, first mover. And Jim Johnson really was um, a person who really taught the entire financial services industry how to co-opt their regulator, how to co-opt Congress, so that they could achieve what they wanted. And 
In many ways, this was personal enrichment, made a lot of money, the top executives of Fannie Mae. This, you know, is not our idea of what a government-sponsored enterprise should do. But so they were a primary mover, not the key, not the only movers. We had Wall Street very involved after Fannie Mae led the way. So it, it really isn't that simple. In, in